the strategies and mechanisms that have been talked about, uh, as you know, in our report, we look at over 30 jurisdictions, how have different countries approached it. It's very driven by, obviously, by culture, by po political environment, legal regime, regulatory regime. And each country has its own story and its own context in which the issue needs to be viewed and assessed. In Europe, they've had, a number of countries have a great success with the quota, mandatory quota. Um, other countries, uh, more aspirational, uh, governance codes, listing requirements, um, and also putting targets and requiring disclosure. In the U.S., we have certainly a, an SEC rule that requires public companies to disclose their diversity policy and their approach to it, and that's pretty much about it in the U.S. Um, really understanding the issue as well as you do, are there certain strategies that you think would be most effective in the U.S. to try to move this, this issue forward more aggressively, certainly shortening the or making the availability of seats more available would be one mechanism. Are are there ways to drive that forward more aggressively here that you can see? Well, you know, we're all watching what goes on in Europe, mm -hmm. Australia, um, different countries around the world, and your report covers that really, um, uh, really very very well. Um, the lead came from Norway. Um, mm -hmm mandating quotas, saying if within a certain period of time there weren't at least 40% women on the board, the company would be disbanded. Um, I can't see legislation like that ever applying in the United mm -hmm. States. And I don't think um, the corporate world would accept um, legislation uh, very well on this issue. Um, I think the corporate governance uh, <coughs> requirements could be strengthened. I think what uh, is required in the proxy and the proxy disclosure is it, it, it could be strengthened and companies could be held more accountable for meeting the goals mm -hmm. um, that they're asked to disclose. Um, you can look what happened in the United Kingdom with the Lord Davis report. Um, it wasn't made a legal requirement, but it was stated here's a quota, here's a target for um, companies to aim for. And they're actually making great progress towards that target. It's inching up towards it. In other words, awareness, I think, is, is a hu a hu makes a huge, huge difference. I think we pay attention to what we measure. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if in the United States, the requirements of whether it's the stock exchange listings, whether it's the SEC, would, if they would require companies to disclose what their targets are and then perhaps hold them accountable in terms of disclosure about the progress they're making. I think um, that's probably the best way to go in the United States. That coupled with awareness that you get from the, now from the private sector. Um, law firms are making um, tr tremendous, they're just increasing the awareness of the issue. Search firms are very important, I think, in this equation. Um, you've got the code of conduct um, signed by a group of search firms in Europe. I think um, we haven't got the US search firms to the, same, to the same point, but as I interact with them individually, there's incredible awareness and they're holding meetings and conferences and webinar, webinars around the subject. Um, I think they feel obligated almost now to when they're asked to do a CEO search to bring forth an equal number of both that male and female qualified talent mm -hmm. to fill the position. Um, so I think they can play a very important role here. And then you've got institutions like in our area, Stanford, which will hold um, uh, courses. You've got uh, courses for training of women um, to become more um, prepared to, to sit on a board. There's a lot of activity um, in the private sector ar mm -hmm. around the issue of preparing women and making them aware of the possibility. So I think we're making good progress at this point in time.